Hi everyone, today we will be looking at a short video on intragroup sales. I know you all look like this and you feel like this when you see intercompany or intragroup inventory sales. Um, let's see if we can make it a bit easier for, your, for, your, for yourselves. So first we're going to ask ourselves what is intercompany sales and then secondly why is intercompany transactions an issue? And then lastly, how do we fix or account these issues? Okay, so what is an intercompany sale? This is when two entities in a group buy inventory from each other. In other words, in a group, let's say there's S, the subsidiary, and a parent, P. I'm just going to refer to them as S and P in this video. Then if S sell to P or P sell to S, we refer to it as an intra-group transaction. And when will it not be an intra-group transaction is when P or S sell to someone else outside of the group, for example, C Limited. Okay, so first question, what is intercompany sale? It's when it's a transaction between two entities inside the same group. Okay, why is the intercompany transaction an issue? Okay, in the individual books or accounting records of these two entities, you've, you will have no problem if obviously you've accounted correctly for the transactions. But when we look at it at a group perspective, there's an issue. Because obviously, if S Limited, the, the, the subsidiary, sells to P Limited, the parent, when we look at it from a group perspective, there was no real sale to an external party. So that's why it is an issue for the group uh, accounting records. Okay, so if S sell to P and make a profit for the group, there was no real profit. But in the books of S Limited, if you just look at the individual accounting records, there will be a profit and then to account for it is correct. But for the group as a whole, we need to do something because it's not. Okay, how do we fix or account for it? It's easy. We eliminate the intergroup transactions and unrealized profit. And I'll show an example later. In simpler terms, we're just going to uh, take out the, let's call it, untrue transactions that did not take place for the group. And then the profit that is still sitting in that individual book that we now transfer to the group financial statements we will have to out. So the things that you need to look out for and remember when you see an intergroup transaction are the following. First, you need to identify the entities in the transaction. In other words, is it the parent? Is it the sub? And uh, in, in later videos, you will look at JVs and associates. So you just need to make sure who's the entities involved in the transaction and who are selling to who? Okay. In other words, is it an upward sale or a downward sale? So upward sale, is it from the subsidiary to the parent? And downward sale, is it from a parent to a subsidiary? Okay. Then we need to look at the period of the transaction. Is it only going to affect my current year transactions or prior year or maybe both? So always look at the period that it is affecting. Then, obviously, on this intercompany transaction, if the one entity sells to another entity, usually they make profit. So look at the profit margin percentage or amount that we give you in an exam. And then always the tax effect. Okay? Obviously, if something is affecting my profit, it will affect my tax. So you need to take that into account and remember to do it. Then lastly, Make sure to account for the effect on NCI, the non-controlling interest. Okay, And with intercompany sales, it's only affecting the NCI if it is an upward sale. In other words, if the subsidiary sells to the parent. So, intercompany sales for inventory. What is the line items that it normally affects in your financial statements? It's the revenue or sales cost of sales, inventory, taxation, as I said, taxation always 
Remember, students used to forget taxation, so remember to take into account the tax effect. Deferred taxation, and then NCI, and as I already said, only when the subsidiary sells. Okay, so in this example, or in this video, we will look at a upward sale when a subsidiary is selling inventory to a parent. I already explained to you that an upward sale is when the subsidiary sell to the parent. Make sure you identify who's selling to you because the journals are a little bit different. As I already said, on the, when it's an upward sale, NCI is affected. And I'll show you or explain later why. Um, and when, the, when it's a downward sale, um, NCI is not affected. So let's look at the example. P Limited, which is now the parent, owns 80% of the ordinary shares in S Limited. That's the subsidiary. So I'm going to refer to P and S, parent and subsidiary. So during the current year, S Limited sold inventory to the amount of 500,000 Rand to P Limited. I'm just going to stop there. In this example, I tell you it's the total sales in brackets. Okay, we can mix this wording around. I want you to make sure you remember as we go further on with this example that this is the total sales. So you always have to do something with the total sales. Then we read further. S Limited added a profit markup of 25% on the cost price to all inventory they sell. So this is just a way how we can or we can give the information to you so that you know, okay, there's going to be a certain profit amount that you need to calculate. In, in some questions or examples, we can maybe give you the, 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 the profit. In this case, you will have to calculate it. And when we say profit markup of 25% on the cost price, um, I'll show you later what you have to do with that. Then at year end, P Limited had 100,000 of this inventory that they bought from S Limited at hand or in stock. Okay. So obviously, if a total of 500,000 was sold, from S to P, and they only had 100,000 left, it is in that 100,000 that the unrealized profit will sit. Why? Because the other 400,000, remember they bought 500, only 100,000 left, the other 400,000, they obviously then already P limited sold to external parties. That's why there will not be unrealized profit in there, because they've sold it, so now we've realized that profit for the group as a whole. And then the, the SA tax rate is 27%. Okay. Required. Prepare the elimination journals for the above transaction in the current year. Narrations are required. Okay. So the first journal will be to take out that total sales or not to take out to correct or rectify the financial statements. Because remember now, um, we said this is not a real transaction for the group. So there was no real sales and no real cost of sales for the group. So we're going to debit the sales. So remember in the individual books of S Limited, when they sold to P Limited, they've recorded this sale. So they've credited sales. Okay. But now we say, no, 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 no. For the group, this is not real revenue. Okay. So we're going to debit our sales with the total sales amount of 500,000 Rand and credit the cost of sales. Again, when P purchased, the parent purchased from S Limited, they debited cost of sales of this 500,000 Rand. But we say, no, 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 no. For the group, there was no real cost of sales here. So we just fix or correct the individual line items of sales and cost of sales. And then look at the rate. Elimination of total intra-group sales between S Limited and P Limited. We specifically ask in the required, show us the narration. So this narration is just a sentence to explain what this journal is about. Okay. So we're not very strict on the, on the exact wording there. As long as me as a reader can understand by that, through that explanation, what you've done on the journal. So if we look at journal number two, um, journal number two is now we take the 100,000. That's now the inventory that they've got at hand, uh, P limited at year end. So that was the, that's the, the, the intercompany part 
uh, that's still at hand and we need to calculate the unrealized profit on that and then we said earlier there's a profit markup of 25% on the cost price so obviously if we take 100% which was the cost the original cost for S limited plus the 25% uh, markup that's why we're going to divide here by 125 to, to, to identify the profit portion so we'll say 100,000, which is the inventory at year end, multiply by 25, which is the profit markup percentage, divided by 125, which is 100% original cost for S, plus the 25% that they've added. And when we do that calculation, that's 20,000 Rand. So we're going to debit cost of sales because we say we're going to increase the expense, okay, because we want to increase the expense and through that we will reduce the profit for the group because this 20,000 was not a real profit for the group okay that's the unrealized or false profit that we're going to take out now and then we credit inventory by the same 20,000 rand again in the group of, in the books of P limited the individual books there's now inventory of 100,000 rand on consolidation we've take into account all of that 100,000 rand but now we say, whoa, for the group perspective, that's not the true reflection of the inventory amount because there's a portion profit, unrealized profit that's sitting in that inventory amount and we need to take that out. So that's why we'll say we, with the narration, it's the elimination of the unrealized profit on the inventory sale between PNS. Okay? Then, as I said earlier, we always need to take into account the tax effect. So because cost of sales was debited, in other words, we increase the expense. When we increase the expense, we decrease our profit. So for, a group, for the group as a whole, there's less profit. And because there's less profit, we will decrease the income tax. That's why we credit income tax. We make it less. And then we debit deferred tax but the, by that same amount, the 5,400 rand. Why? Because we say, okay, this is just something that we defer because it's unrealized profit. But once this asset uh, inventory will be sold to external parties, we're going to realize that tax. So again, the narration, the tax effect on unrealized profit of intercompany inventory sales. Okay, then we look at the last journal, journal number three. So as I said earlier, when there is a upward sale, in other words, from the subsidiary to the parent, we need to take into account the NCI as well. Um, why is that? Because the, we, we included 100% of the line items of the subsidiary. But obviously, if the parent only owns 80%, that means 20% belongs to someone. So originally, when the profit was allocated, um, we debited NCI in the profit or loss. PL and we credited um, NCI in the statement of financial position. That was now of the original profit. So obviously that credit originally set it um, in the statement of financial position as a credit. And originally the reallocation or uh, distribution of the profit in the statement of financial uh, uh, in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income was allocated or attributed to NCI. So now we reversed, we took out the unrealized profit. So the journal will be other way around. So we will debit NCI, the statement of financial position with this profit of 20,000 Rand less the 5,400 Rand tax. And then you multiply that by the, by the percentage NCI shareholding, which is 20% in this case. And then you credit NCI in PL. So the reason why we credited it is because originally, as I said, we've debited it with that um, reallocation or attribution of the of the profit of the group, and now we reverse that. So um, always remember when the subsidiary is selling when it's an upward sale to account for the NCI. And that is all from my side. I hope you've watched this video because then already it's a great job and that it will make uh, intergroup sale of inventory a bit easier for yourselves.
Thank you. Bye.